definition of a square root, just so we're all on the same page. Definition of a square root is the solution to the equation, um, say, Solutions to this equation, x squared is equal to something, where that something is any number that's positive, is the definition of a square root in the real numbers. When we simplify square roots, and I want you to leave them as in exact form, I want exact answers, or I mean no decimals. Who recalls how to simplify square root without using them? Nate, what do you do? Uh, you find those perfect squares that go into them. Yeah, find the biggest perfect square that goes into them and rewrite them as safe factors. So square to 75 is the same as 25 times 3. So now we've got, if you want to get real technical, you have square root of 25 times square root of 3, or 5 roots of 3. Five times. Yep, 5 roots of 3, 5 times the square root of 3. Same thing, same difference. Okay. Root 27, the largest perfect square that goes to the 27 is 9. So this can be written as 9 times 3. Because 9 times 3 is 27. So square root of 9 times 3, that's the same as square root of 9 times the square root of 3, which is 3 roots of 3. 300, that's 100 times 3, which is 10 roots of 3. Okay. And you can continue. Um, if you multiply roots together, what's nice about uh, multiplying roots is you can think of it in the same idea, same frame of mind as like multiplying variables. And then if you multiply variables, you can combine them together in one expression. If you multiply square roots, you can combine them under one square root. So we can combine, say, square root of 7 and square root of 35 is the square root of 7 times 35. Seven is what is it? I'm willing to bet this can be reduced. Does anyone know what the largest perfect square that goes into this is? Off the top of your head? It's 49. Now how do you know 49? What's the easier way to get to 49? Let's think of breaking, break 37 into its factors. What numbers multiply together to get 35? 35 is the same as 7 times 5. And what's 7 times 7? 49. It's a perfect square. There's one way to take a, there's one way to think of this. And so now this is better written as say 7 times the square root of 5. So when we're multiplying these together, maybe let's think about what the, let's maybe even think about factoring these things beforehand. Because you could do, you get some pretty nifty tricks like that. Like if we take, like, how about this? How about we break these into factors first? Maybe that could help us. What if we break 10 into its factors? Maybe not even perfect square ones. What numbers multiply to 10? So how about we say this? Square root of 10 is the same as root 5 times root 2. What are some factors that multiply to 15? Root 5 and square root of 3. What do, what do you get when you multiply square root of 5 times square root of 5? 25. Root 25, which is the same as 5. So if you multiply two square roots, 
the same squares together, we're really just eliminating that square root. Square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is just 5. And then you can simplify this thing. What's two, square root of 2 times square root of 3? Could be another method for factoring them. That's a, just another trick. You could multiply them together and get square root of 150 and then figure out that, oh, 25 is the largest perfect square that goes into them. That's, you could do that just as easily. This is maybe a different way to solve the same problem. And so on. Do we, wanna, do we need to continue? Yeah, no. so let's say you have two solve square roots or simplify square roots. There is one, one rule that uh, we don't really like to have. We really don't want to see um, square roots in the denominator of a fraction. When all, said, when all is said and done, we don't want square roots in the denominator. <laughs> so the process that would do that, with the process to get the square roots out of the denominator algebraically, it's called rationalizing the denominator. This is just the process for rewriting expressions so radicals are not are not in a denominator. Okay. <laughs> so the first few are pretty easy. If you're if the denominator is is just a perfect square, then there's not really a ton. Then we just simplify that radical. So like, um, as we saw hopefully from algebra one, we can rewrite this as say root 100 over root 169. And each of those are perfect squares. This is just 10 over 13. Square root of 169 is just 13. No big deal. Same with this one. 3 over 8. Well, this one's a little bit trickier. This is square root of 11 over 12. This 11 is not a perfect square, but that's fine. That's not a perfect square. Nothing to reduce. One four, square root of 144 is just a whole number 12. Not a big problem there. Same with this guy. You can reduce this to, say, root 15 over 2. Simplify the square root of 4. Not a big deal. Where it gets a little bit trickier is, well, what happens when we get not perfect squares in the denominator? So this is like root 2 over root 15. The square root of 15 is not a perfect square. There's, there's nothing that really goes into it at all. So we're going to need to come up with something new to do to it. Well, because we're not allowed uh, by, by uh, convention to leave a square root in the denominator. We need to rationalize this. So what could you multiply this fraction by top and bottom so that there's no more square root? Nate? Multiply the square root Just multiply it by square root of 15. Because root 15 times root 15 is just 15. So if we multiply top and bottom by whatever the square root of the denominator is, you get square root of 2 times square root of 15 is square root of 30. Square root of 15 times square root of 15 is, by definition, just 15. And from here, you could now you could try to simplify this. But I don't think there's a perfect square that goes into 30. So you'd be done. Nine over eight. Well, that's the same as three over square root of eight. What's square root of eight simplified to? Two, four times two, which is two roots of two. Square root in the denominator. Got to eliminate it. So, what should we multiply the denominator by to get rid of that square root? Multiply it by square root of two. Multiply by root 2 over root 2, and what do we get? 3 square root 
Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2, and we still have that 2 in front. 2 times 2 is 4. Okay. It gets a little more difficult. Well, not difficult. We gotta need, we're going to need a new strategy if we have a binomial. Well, it's not technically a binomial, but if we have a, two terms. Because if we just multiply this by square root of 2, you have to use distributive property. And if you just multiply by root 2, you'd get 2, and you get 5 roots of 2, and you're not any better than you started with, unfortunately. So if we have a two-term uh, expression, we're going to need something a little more powerful, which is called a conjugate. Okay? We're going to multiply what's called, by what's called the conjugate. The conjugate is this. If you have, say, a plus square root of b, it's conjugate is a minus square root of b. So what if you started with something minus the square root? What's its conjugate going to be? Something plus the square root. We're going to take that same expression, but change the sign in between them. Because we're going to find what's called its conjugate. Top and bottom by the conjugate of what's below, we'll get, say, multiply the bottom by 5 plus root 2, and multiply the top by 5 plus square root 2. And what that's going to leave us with is on the bottom, square the first, square the last, and put a minus in between. Square the 5, square the root 2, and put a minus in between them. That's what's going to be on our denominator. You could foil this if you really wanted to. You could prove to yourself that it would be 5 times 5 is 25. Negative, two, negative root 2 times 5 is negative 5 roots of 2. 5 times positive root 2 is positive 5 roots of 2. And then negative square root of 2 plus square, times positive square root of 2 is, positive, is negative 2. The denominator after you, fact, after you multiply out ends up being... 25 minus 4. Sorry, 2. Oh. 5 squared minus root 2 squared is what the denominator works out to be. And then the top is, well, it's 4 times 5 plus root 2. And distribute that out. And your final answer would be 20 plus 4 roots of 2 over, what's 25 minus 2? 23. Why can't you just... I need to multiply, since it's a two term on the bottom, I'm going to multiply by its conjugate. So it's 4 minus square root 11. 4 minus root 11. So if we, let's, let, we can multiply this out and FOIL it just to prove ourselves. So if we think like FOIL, we'll go 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times negative root 11 is 4 times minus root 11. Root 11 times 4 is plus 4 roots of 11. And positive root 11 times negative root 11 is minus. 11. Those are the same, so we'll cancel them. So the denominator is going to really be 16 minus 11. The numerator will be 2 times 4 minus root 11 this time. So distribute, and you end up with what well, we get, what, 8? minus 2 roots of 11 over 16 minus 11 is 5. We'd be rationalizing this denominator. Add 15 to both sides to get 2x squared equals, what is it, 70, 80? Divide by 2, x squared equals 40. Square root. And x is equal to what? 
What's x equal to? Square root of 40, you could simplify this to what? 4 times 10, which equals 2 roots of 10. I claim that that's only half of the answer. I claim that there are two answers to every square root problem. So when you find the square root, that you better have a positive or a negative. Because you can always multiply a negative times a negative to get back to a positive. 